Hotel accommodations for this episode of Beyond Your Backyard provided by the Radisson Blue Aqua Hotel. The Radisson Blue Aqua Hotel was the first of its kind in the United States, offering an innovative new standard for upscale accommodations in Chicago. Hi, I'm Eric, the Travel Guide. You know, as you stretch your travel legs more and more, you might feel a little overwhelmed by all there is to do and see in this country of ours, especially if you find yourself in the magnificent Midwestern metropolis of Chicago. But I am here to help. So let's get right to it as we learn more about the ever impressive, near and dear to my heart, Chicago, Illinois. My name is Eric Hastings. Yeah, that's me. And for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to travel. And I still do today. Airlines, hotels, cruises, new places, delicious food, I love all of it. And that's why I've been traveling the world professionally for more than a decade. But what troubles me these days is that Americans are leaving paid vacation time on the table each year at an alarming rate. Well, I want to help fix that. So please consider this a personal invitation to join me each week on my mission to get you traveling more than ever before. Because while the world is a pretty big place to explore, your next vacation is waiting to be discovered not just around the globe, but perhaps just around the corner. Let me introduce you to the places, people, and secrets I've discovered that remind me just how exciting it is to be alive and hopefully will inspire you to get out of the house and into your next great adventure. I am Eric the Travel Guy, and this is Beyond Your Backyard. Thank you for watching and welcome. You know, being from Des Moines, Iowa, I have very fond memories of visiting the city of Chicago. Well, for about 20 minutes, I attended university here. And as an adult, I've always been happy to return to this classic Midwestern American city. But I can tell you right up front, because this city is so big and so diverse and so interesting, you're probably going to need more time than you think to see it all. But trust me, it's worth it. Now, on today's episode, we're going to explain how water has and continues to play a major role here. We will also show you how to experience the curvature of the earth, and we will eat our way through a virtual symphony of amazing food, including the famous Chicago-style hot dog. Sounds like fun, huh? Let's get started. Because Chicago is located in the Midwestern state of Illinois, you may not think of it as a city by the water, but actually water has always played a big role in the city's development. Even from the earliest days in the 1780s, when the first immigrant built his home at the mouth of the Chicago River, Jean Baptiste Point du Sable became known as the founder of the city and its first permanent resident. Lake Michigan is also a major feature here that helped Chicago's development and economic growth as it served as a shipping route for settlers and traders throughout the 19th century, putting it on the map, so to speak. Now, the Chicago River and Lake Michigan serve as awesome recreational and historical features that Chicago takes great pride in. Even the Chicago flag, designed by Wallace Rice in 1917, represent these important waters in its blue stripes, the top stripe representing both the lake, as it's known by the locals, and the north branch of the river, and the bottom stripe representing the south branch and the Great Canal over the Chicago Portage. This south branch of the river also highlights the impressive inventions Chicagoans have always demonstrated when, due to sanitation issues and fears of disease spreading throughout polluted waters in the late 1880s, it was decided to devise a system to reverse the flow of the Chicago River, having water flow out of Lake Michigan as opposed to flowing in. Now, the city offers historic boat tours on the river. The Chicago Architecture Foundation's tour is the best, and advanced ticket purchasing is recommended. The zipper, the Ferris wheel, yellow number two pencils, the electric dishwasher, brownies. Am I just listing a random group of things or are all of these tied together with a common thread? The common thread wins. You see, each one of these items was either invented or implemented for the first time here in Chicago. In 1893, at the World's Columbian Exposition, later to become known as the Chicago World's Fair, Illinois native and engineer George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. debuted his original amusement park classic ride, the Ferris Wheel. His 264-foot towering masterpiece was created as a direct engineering response to Paris's Eiffel Tower. The intent was to out Eiffel Eiffel. His design and execution was a rousing success, and although his original Ferris Wheel was taken down in 1906, the concept stuck. 
influencing not only Chicago's cultural history, but also amusement parks and cities around the world. Today, Navy Pier's Centennial Wheel landmarks Ferris's unparalleled innovation and sightseeing spectacle with an updated state-of-the-art adventure. It's a ride perfect for visitors of all ages, although it may cost a little more than the 50 cents it did back in 1893. How do you describe Navy Pier to someone? Navy Pier is really, truly a collection of what's best in Chicago. And it's in an incredibly unique space in that it stretches nearly a mile out into the lake. So now we've transformed Navy Pier into a platform for what's truly best in Chicago. Culinary experiences that are reflective of the great dining you find in Chicago, uh, you know, attractions certainly, and most importantly, the programmatic elements are really a reflection of what's great in Chicago in the way of the cultural and arts organizations. So not only do we have this incredible physical space, but what happens on the space is what really draws people. This would be a perfect first stop. You can feel it on, what is it, 50 acres? or what? 50 acres, 50. really creating a connection between the lakefront and the city and coordinating with all the other great things happening in the city. Think of all the public spaces that have become accessible. Right. And that's something that we've done here too, is really make it accessible, welcoming, and a space that people want to enjoy. Has it really served as a catalyst to say, we have to make sure that the rest of the city is clean. We've got to make sure. We isn't that part of your responsibility? Yes, I think, and it really has. And all of the cultural institutions certainly work together, ensuring that Chicago is such a livable city and a city that people want to visit. So, you know, all in concert, we work together so that we have clean spaces, accessible programming, things that people want to experience. Now, I know it never rains in travel and never. tourism. It never snows. Never. It's never four degrees outside. It's always sunny. But it's always sunny in travel. But in the unlikely event that it's going to rain, that's part of the attraction here is that you can come in and come in out of extreme heat or rain or snow or whatever. Yeah, so it's absolutely. really four season, right? Yes. So Navy Pier is a year-round destination. So we're actually embarking on construction of a new hotel. So that what? we have a 24-7 year-round experience here with dining and retail experiences that are, you know, attractions on a year-round basis. Truly, really, mm -hmm. some of the best arts and cultural activities are provided right here at Navy Pier for free. But then also you can't deny that these views, these views are absolutely spectacular. We're in such a unique location that you look back, you have the whole city as your backdrop when you're standing out on the pier. And the new stages in Polk Brothers Park, the lake stage, the city stage, they use the vistas as their backdrops. And it's just truly spectacular. Can't be beat. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. While we're on the subject of invention, listen to this. Prominent socialite Bertha Palmer, whose husband owned this very famous hotel, well, she asked the pastry chef to create a dessert that would be appropriate for the ladies in attendance of the Chicago World's Fair. The end result, wait till you see this. The invention of the browning, which incidentally is available every day here at the Palmer House, made from the original recipe. Oh. I love delicious innovation going to take this. I'll be right back. Chicago's Riverwalk has gone through a major transformation, and you have to spend time here. You've got cafes, wineries, and unique public spaces. They're cropping up all along the river's edge, and it is the ideal spot to people watch and take in the unique natural and architectural beauty of the city. Reserve a river dome at City Winery in the spring to see what I mean. And Lake Michigan, with its 26 miles of shoreline, 15 beachfront areas, and several marinas housing thousands of boats, offers a huge variety of recreational and water sport activities like boating, swimming, jet skiing, and fishing. While the shoreline features plenty of trails for whatever your active heart desires. With lakeside eateries, bars, and cafes popping up all the time, it's easy to spend a day at the beach on the water in the water or just at the water's edge. There's no wrong way to enjoy it. Just be sure to take a picture of that towering downtown cityscape. Montrose Beach on the north side is my recommendation for an off the main path and easily accessible beach experience. There's even free parking if you time it just right.
1871 was a tough year for Chicago, and that in itself is an understatement because that was the year of the Great Fire here in Chicago. It burned nearly three miles of the city to the ground. Thousands of buildings were lost, hundreds of lives were lost. Miraculously, the building right behind me stood as it stands today. There is some lore surrounding the actual cause of the fire, but it did begin in a small barn on the south side. Because of severe drought conditions that autumn, the fire spread quickly and violently and burned for nearly two days, destroying most in its path. The aftermath of the fire highlighted the resilient spirit of Chicagoans. And that, my friends, is why we call Chicago the second city, because the Great Fire destroyed almost everything in its path. But from its ashes, the second city emerged and eventually became the Chicago we know and love today. Chicago is a big American city. And I've always said the easiest way to learn about the present is learn about the past. That's why I want you to make a stop here. This is the Chicago History Museum, and you will love it. As a matter of fact, this L car, L, which is short for elevated train, this car was used in the Chicago World's Fair back in 1893. Let's go take a look around, shall we? They have Lincoln's bed here. That's amazing. How do you describe the architectural identity of Chicago to somebody who's never been here before? You know, Chicago, as I like to say it, we burned down at the right time. So we burned down in 1871, right as all this new technology was hitting the marketplace, the elevator, steel frame construction. So we were able to become the birth of the skyscraper. And so when you look around Chicago, we have this wonderful architectural innovation. We tell people all the time, look up, because of these fabulous buildings all around us. How do you take in this city, architecturally speaking? We have 450 incredible docents, volunteers, who do tours of the city. And we have over 85 different tours, 361 days a year, 8,000 tours annually. So there are a lot of people who can take you on a walking tour, a bus tour, or fabulous boat tour. They'll give you a new set of glasses to see our city, but also your own city. We have actually just opened a new Chicago Architecture Center, which really expands on what we're doing with the tours because it's a destination where it allows you to come and see this scale model of the city with over 7,000 buildings on it, to see these projections mapping on it that tell you where the Great Fire came, uh, to learn more about skyscrapers. And we have this incredible skyscraper gallery with 26 foot high ceilings where you can look up at these mock-ups that we're doing, these models of skyscrapers, both from Chicago, but around the world. I would suggest if you only have an, 90 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, take the Architecture River Cruise. It's always ranked the number one thing to do in the city of Chicago, and the Chicago Architecture Foundation River Cruise is just a great way to see the city. And we're located right at the Michigan and Wacker, so as convenient as you can get right off the Magnificent Mile, right where the Architecture Center is. And it's just fabulous. You cruise down the river, you look up, and you can see the great city. We're recognized around the world as the home of modern architecture. And so, you know, we talk about the early skyscrapers, but we are the home of the international style with Mies van der Rohe building buildings here. And then certainly our architects that are building here, but they're also building the world. So we are recognized anywhere, the American city of architecture and the place for modernism. Why here? Could have been St. Louis, it could have been, you know, there's a lot of other places in this country and, and certainly around the world, but why here? We attracted, after the Great Fire, we attracted this great talent of architecture. And you know, once you get one architect building something exciting, he's training other architects. And so you really start this architectural style. And so we were the hub of innovation and people wanted to come here to learn. They just happened to stay here and build. Mm -hmm. So this is very prestigious for an architect. You know, you say you're an architect in Chicago. That's really prestigious. That's, sometimes I do say that. I can't back it up, but you know, from time <laughs> to time, you know, when I'm in a bar, uh, it's another matter altogether. I think what I'm gonna do, based on this interview, I'm gonna design and build a building and put it here in Chicago. That is scary. And then I'm gonna put my name as large <laughs> as I can get it on the side of the building. That's Somebody's already done that in the city. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Travel's not political, you know, it's good to meet you. Thank you very much for this. I did take Lynn's suggestion and enjoyed an architecture tour, but I also spent a little time in Chicago's green spaces, Cloudgate, 
or the Bean as it's known in the city, which is part of the greater Millennium Park Plaza, is the perfect photo op spot on the Magnificent Mile. Millennium Park is a glorious 24 and a half acre park with an outdoor music venue, fountains, and plenty of fun for residents and visitors. The exquisite Art Institute of Chicago is right behind it, and Maggie Daly Park is right next door. Oh, and Grant Park is right down the block too. Suffice it to say, Chicago has a lot of green spaces. In my opinion, if you want the best views, head to 360 Chicago. It's time to tilt. I'm not sure people really understand how spectacular the views are. And we're intelligent people, yet we come up here and you hear the gasps every day, don't you? Every day, every day. And the views, uh, they never get old. They're different every day. Right. Uh, we really do have the best views in the city. So we're, we're, we're just a block off Michigan Avenue. We're looking down south at the Loop and, and downtown Chicago. You can't get this view anywhere else in the city. No, you guys spent a tremendous amount of money and time, energy, and effort to really perfect the experience. So we tell did. me a little bit about that. Sure. So uh, there's been an observation deck on this floor since the John Hancock Center opened in 1970. Yep. When it opened, it was the l tallest mixed use building in the world. And since 2012, we've put about $11 million into the experience. So Gosh. everything that you see is brand new. Mm -hmm. um, we really went through and put a lot of thought into the guest experience and the type of information that they would be interested in learning about Chicago and its neighborhoods and its incredible history. Mm -hmm. uh, and then up here on the 94th floor, we put in tilt which is our thrill feature. I think we're going to oh uh, get over there and experience that shortly. I can't wait. Shortly. I can't wait. You have to go with me. I will. I'm going to get a little scared. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's okay. No problem. I mean, I'll be there this. right with you. Okay, yep. good. I, I'm, I'm a pro at it. Uh, <laughs> we also have uh, Bar 94 up here, which is our bar and cafe. Um, and we have new technology on the floor that encourages our guests to learn about the city and the skyline and the different iconic buildings that you can see from up here. I think that's really interesting because, once again, it's one thing to come up and, and of course, take great pictures and great selfies. That's for the kids, the selfies, you know. That's one thing, and really to see what there is to see. But to learn about that and to take one step further, I really appreciate the fact that you guys took the time to say, you know, Chicago's about neighborhoods. Yeah. How do you do that? Sure. So, uh, you know, our team is is very local. So most of our teams born and raised in Chicago or in the very near suburbs. Uh, so we, we knew there were incredible stories here that we wanted to tell. Uh, Chicago's a city of neighborhoods. There's 77 neighborhoods in the city of Chicago. We picked eight of them uh, to tell their story. I uh, had to pick eight. Right. Uh, and so we, we use a, a combination of video interviews with residents of those neighborhoods and really incredible imagery and the history of the neighborhoods to just give our guests a little bit of information and to give them a chance to learn more about this incredible city and the story that it has to tell. Best time of year, best time of day. The city looks different all the time, right? So now you're at, at the beginning of the summer, the city's starting to look green, the lake is beautiful and blue, there's boats on the water, there's people on the beach. If you come back in the fall, We've got beautiful views of all the parks around. You know, Chicago is a city famous for its parks. parks. Mm -hmm. um, our, our city motto is city in a garden. Uh, so you can see the, all the parks starting to turn colors in the fall. In the winter, the lake can be covered in a sheet of ice and snow, and it's stunningly beautiful um, and, and really surprises people when they come up here in the winter because they're not expecting that type of beauty in the dead of winter. And then, of course, in the spring as the city starts to come alive again. So if you come just before sunset, you can get the day view. And then you've got a beautiful sunset on the west side. We have the best sunset that view in the city. We have unobstructed views to the west. Oh. We put in some seating there so our guests can get a glass of champagne from the bar, sit down on our stadium seating, watch the sunset view to the west, and then you can watch the city lights start to come on. And it, the, the city twinkles uh, a bit like a crown at night with all the lights around us. I knew you were a hopeless romantic. I knew that that was the case. <laughs> it is terribly romantic. Thank you for this. Yes, of course. Tilt. It's time to tilt. Let's do it. Chicago is a city filled with neighborhoods, but you may be surprised to learn there's more than 200 neighborhoods to explore. You're probably going to need to extend your vacation, I assure you. Oh, they're very passionate about their city. Okay, now that's not it's pretty easy to imagine that some of the neighborhoods in Chicago have very unique characteristics and obvious geographic boundaries. So yes, be sure to go where the tourists go, but also get into the neighborhoods where the locals live. The point here is that travel is personal, which means chances are you'll find a neighborhood that speaks to you if you give it a chance. 
Exploring all of those neighborhoods is bound to work up an appetite. And Chicago, much like New Orleans or New York, is definitely a food town, which is why I stopped by the Vienna Beef Cafe to deconstruct the world-famous Chicago-style hot dog. What is a Chicago-style hot dog? So Chicago-style hot dog is an all-beef Vienna beef hot dog. Got it. Usually natural casing, which gives it an extra snap, nestled in a poppy seed bun, which cool. is important. It's kind of characteristic of the Chicago dog. Sure. But then importantly, the seven sacred condiments go on there. Got it. That is yellow mustard, bright green relish, mm -hmm. chopped onions, slice of tomato. Mm -hmm. Pickle spear gets nestled along the side, sport peppers on the edges, and a little celery salt to finish it off. There's no ketchup in there. There's no ketchup on this hot dog. Why is that? Ketchup's kind of sweet. We already have a tomato on it, so that vegetable is already taken care of. And it's a perfect balance, in our opinion, of sweet and spicy, cold and hot. It's just the perfect hot dog. And Vienna Beef is the undisputed inventor of this hot dog. We right? started the Chicago style hot dog during the Great Depression. Our company started in 1893 during the World's Fair, but uh, during the Depression when people were short on money, mm -hmm. um, they created this hot dog loaded with all those vegetables. We call it dragging it through the garden, and that only cost a nickel in the 1930s. If the Vienna Beef Company was started in, in the late 1800s, all of the chemicals and all the th awful things that we think may be in a hot dog was never in there to begin with. And never was. So Isn't we were, that crazy? We were a really clean, wonderful product in 1893. We never added anything to it along all those years. So unlike a lot of companies who started quickly trying to take stuff out, we were great from the beginning. We should probably try one of these immediately. I think we should. I mean, this is, we've set it up for time. Or we have to do it right now. Okay. Toast. Cheers. Oh my gosh. Wow! Oh my God. Vienna Beef Chicago style hot dog, it doesn't get better. Tom and I did spend the better part of the afternoon sampling sausages, and if you're getting jealous, don't worry, they'll ship them right to your door. Which reminds me, Greek to Polish, Irish to Chinese, and everything in between, Chicago's vibrant and ever-evolving culinary scene draws from the rich history of the immigrants to the city, as well as taking on the classics and spinning them into something new and exciting for the taste buds. Here comes the montage. A venerable buffet of footage for you to enjoy. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice too. Oh, shh, quiet. Still talking. Friends, let's bring it in for just a second here because this debate is fierce. You know, generations of conversations have been going on. Wars have been fought. Whether you go on or off the beaten path, where do you go? to get the original Chicago-style deep dish pizza. I have a suggestion. You go up to Lincoln Park and you come to Pequod's. While the founder of Pizzeria Uno is often credited with the actual invention back in the 1940s, Pequod's is a neighborhood favorite. The pizza is beyond amazing, as are the rest of the items on the menu, and the atmosphere is energetic and casual. To say Chicago is a serious food town is, well, pretty much to state the obvious. But to experience it firsthand as you eat your way around town is a real culinary delight. Well, I brought you here. This is Al's Italian beef, and it's very important you do the Italian stance. Now, yes, you have to get one of these. And let me show you, there's basically three elements we're working with here. You've got to get two and a half feet off the countertop. Otherwise, you might ruin your shoes. And I love these shoes, okay? You gotta get your elbows on the table and the mouth wide open. Ready? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Mm. Now, we can't come to Chicago and not discuss public enemy number one. I'm talking, of course, about Al Capone. But if you want to know what it was like to have a cocktail and listen to proper jazz back in the day, well, that's why you come up here. This is the Uptown neighborhood, and right behind me, that's the Green Mill Cocktail Lounge. Mm -hmm. Now, no, we're not taking you in because I want to save that for your next vacation here. Let's keep moving. After the sun goes down, Chicago nights are made for fond memories. So get out there and explore, see a show, listen to live music, and make some new friends. <laughs> Pretty impressive, isn't it? 
You know, there's something special about this town that yanks on my sleeve every time I roam too far from it. It's that something special that always brings me back. Chicago, it is definitely my kind of town. I, American Travel Guy, thank you for exploring beyond your backyard. Welcome back and thank you for watching. Uh, Tom, I have to admit, this looked a little bit better on paper than maybe in practice. I think you look really good. Oh, well, <laughs> thanks, buddy. You thank look you. athletic, too. <laughs> Well, you know, I work out. What can I say? I've been going to spin classes. Can you tell? <laughs> it's a hotter pepper than I thought. I just, I just wanted to grow up and do a show where I could eat hot dogs all day, and my dream has finally come true. I think I'm rubbing grease on my face from my lunch. Listen, they don't call me Jenny Craig for nothing, OK? <laughs> oh, great, now we're going to get a lawsuit. I said unique twice, but we're going to keep it in the show. Da, 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 da. I'm going to go into this bar. Mm -hmm. You know, we need some cheese fries. 